yeah it is officially fall here in ohio um which me having a garage gym means that the heaters are going to be coming out of storage now and the garage doors are going to be closed probably until spring which is very depressing while i'm kind of getting my stuff out i figured i might make a video kind of explaining um, how I eat my uh, garage gym. This is going to be like fall, winter number three for me. So by now I've pretty much figured out what works, what doesn't work, what uh, is the cheapest way, I guess, in my opinion, um, to keep my space heated um, and not basically make it not a huge pain in the butt. For it is an extra inconvenience that you don't have to deal with obviously in the summer. So I'll kind of go through some of the heating options and um, kind of give you which one I think is working best and my, my go-tos now. Step one, you're gonna kind of assess your garage, see how much space you're using and kind of what you're using it for. So if you have a low ceiling, you're in one little garage bay, um, obviously it's gonna be easier to heat that space with something smaller versus me. I got a technically a three car um, garage right now that I'm just using two spots of it. One's just still for the cars. So with a pretty high ceiling as you can see. So that was a, uh, a big difference where I, I couldn't get away with using like a space heater. So if you're just kind of using a home gym by yourself, uh, maybe you just wanna get a space heater and rest warm tough it out. For someone like me, I'm training clients in here, so I need uh, to have it be warm when they come in. Hard to uh, justify charging people and tell them it's gonna be 30 degrees when they work out. Step two is I would figure out your budget. Um, I'll go through the different options today and kind of say roughly what they cost. It kind of goes if you're not really trying to spend money here by yourself, maybe you want like a cheaper space heater. Uh, if you got people coming in or you really just want it warm, get the more expensive options like a, a gas propane heater or something like that. Step three is I would look at your uh, insulation of your space. So insulation is huge. It's going to basically make the, whatever heater you have do even better, um, use less energy or gas or whatever you're gonna you be using um, and just make it more comfortable. First thing I would look at is maybe your garage doors. So here they're all okay, insulated garage doors. So that makes a huge difference. Um, if they're not, they make tons of options. You, I've seen people get them sprayed like with the foam. You can buy like little foam squares to put into those gaps in the garage door. That will make a huge difference. Step two is insulate the floors. That sounds pretty complicated, but what I would do is maybe get some stall mats or some kind of thing. Uh, my first couple months, I just had straight concrete with like that little foam square behind me. Um, definitely made a big difference when I got these rubber stall mats. It has like that inch of just rubber, just so you're not touching cold, ice cold concrete. The last thing to really look at insulating is kind of, um, the little drafty parts. So I would look at your, if you have windows like I have, I use those plastic, um, kind of that plastic sheet you put over the windows. That seemed to help because you kind of make a little air barrier in between there that kind of acts as insulation and you're cutting down on potentially that draft that would be blown through the windows. Same with the doors, I would look at your edges. Um, these ones were sealed, but there was a little gap. I ended up really just shoving a towel in there because I was feeling a pretty hearty draft come through there. That's enough talking, let's, um, let's get into it. So first heater I ever had was this guy right here. It's a Presto heat dish um, from Costco. But this thing, not gonna lie, is the slam. This thing gets hot. So you just turn it on, filament's heating air, and just, this reflects on this dish. Um, so this is a great space heater option. Um, I still obviously use it to this day. Um, just basically shining on you when you're warming up because it does heat up pretty nicely. Um, so if you are someone that's just gonna be by themselves, uh, this is a great option because it's, like I said, it's perfect for direct heat right on you, maybe when you're getting started in your workout, or I've used it for equipment will get cold. Um, put that in front of this and it will kind of heat it up. I mean, it's already feeling pretty good. Yeah, so this thing probably runs, I don't know, 30, 40 bucks. Um, so it's something I would look into. Even with my other heating options, I still, still use this one every single day. Another space heater I have um, is this one. It mounts onto a wall, ceiling, anything like that. Um, same thing, filament heats up. This one, my idea was the weights do get cold in winter when it gets deep into winter. I was hoping to heat, you know, just kind of shine down, heat the handles up. Uh, it doesn't actually do that at all. Like the thing directly under, like this is going to get hot, but everything else here is not going to even. This thing kind of sucks. It's still here, but again, maybe it's one of the same things if you're by yourself. It's shining on you, but. These do not go as far as I thought they would. Ah, oh, didn't see that. Um, I made the switch to propane. First order of business though, when you do get propane, is you get yourself one of these guys, carbon monoxide alarm. Very important. Um, you don't want to gas yourself out. You don't want to gas your carcass out. You get one of these. They are very cheap. You might even have an extra in your house. Um, but yeah, 
go to your ace and get one. Next step is, yeah, with propane, you do need some sort of ventilation, so you do not want an airtight. Luckily, most garages are not airtight. Um, where I put this is next to the doors, where I was talking earlier, there is a pretty major gap, um, which actually was good for pulling in a little bit of fresh air, because it is pulling air to burn. Um, so how this one works is this is a Mr. Heater, basically a giant Mr. Buddy Heater. Uh, plug propane in, and it turns on, kicks on, turns like a fireplace. This guy was great because it can sustain heat for a long time. It took a while to heat up, probably 20, 30 minutes. Um, it didn't warm the space very much. The margin wasn't huge, but it was used very little propane to have a sustained heat. So if you're gonna be training people over a long time, maybe you get the same temperature and then this thing can just kind of hold that. When it gets really cold, it's still only gonna be in the 50s in here probably, but like I said, it's a, it's a sustained heat. Um, this thing probably runs 250 bucks, I believe. Got this one from, from TSC. When I would run this thing um, almost every day, for a couple hours, I think I would get like a week and a half, two weeks of, out of like a you know normal propane tank. So not awful. Number one on the list um, out of the heaters is this guy right here. Same company, Mr. Heater. This is one of the force air uh, propane heaters. So same thing, plugs in a standard propane tank, and this thing you turn it on, it's just this is probably the smallest one they make. I've seen people have ones that are like crazy big. Um, so this thing is insane. It blows out very hot air at a very high rate. I've actually stood too close and burned off leg hairs, so be careful of that. If you have a very small space, would not recommend. This thing is insane. I've heated the space, it's 30 degrees outside, and in 30 minutes I can get up to like 65. I've actually kind of left it on for over an hour one time before coming out here. Again, it was probably in the 30s outside, um, and it was like 85 in here, and it's like January. Crazy, sweating. Um, the only downfall with this thing is it is very loud. Basically, I'll heat the, the room up to 70 and then turn it off. People are in here for an hour and then the time of the heat is probably 60. The temperatures drop rapidly, but you got to think you're coming in here and the time the temperature drop, the temperature is dropping as your body is going up. So it, it's usually pretty comfortable. Um, it's just you needed that first 10 minutes need to be warm when you're first getting started. Um, so I recommend this for that, for that reason. This thing also lasts a very long time. Again, since you're only running it for 30 minutes at a time, um, cuts down the usage and I can go through a tank in like two or three weeks. It's, it's pretty insane. Um, so this is definitely a holy grill. Um, I recommend this thing. This thing's only 120, 150 bucks. So it is a lot cheaper than that for the small one and this is all you need. Um, one thing I should add to this one is you do need to plug this one in to get that forced air, to get that turbine running. So uh, you do know you, hopefully you have electric in your garage, um, run an extension cord to it, go that way. This guy right here does not come with a fan, but you can buy one. Um, it doesn't really do anything. So it is kind of, it's like 50 bucks that I'm never gonna get back. But it, it does, I guess it does probably help blow the air a little bit. It's like this big. Like I said, this this has changed everything. Um, that's changed everything. So I uh, highly recommend that one, for, especially for the price. I mean, it's, it's unbeatable. The only thing I have yet to solve in the uh, heating a garage gym scenario is, um, but once it gets December, January, February, when it's like below freezing all the time, I haven't solved the problem of the actual weights being cold. So the problem is, you know, when you heat the space up, it could be 70 in here, but since it was 30 degrees all night, everything is gonna be cold. Barbells, dumbbells, anything metal in here, it like, it's like touching an ice cube, it, it kind of sucks. So um, I've tried tons of different stuff. You can, you can bring, people say bring stuff in, but you know, it's kind of a pain. And again, if you're not just training yourself, it's, you can't really keep things warm. Um, and I'm not gonna carry every single dumbbell inside. Um, other things I try to put the heaters on it, but I don't want to get the heaters too close because I don't want to like damage the equipment. Um, I've looked at, again, like I said, that heater up there was meant to, God, I'm not good at this. That heater up there was meant to heat uh, the weights. It doesn't do anything. Um, so my solution to that is if you know you're going to use something, maybe in front of my space heater, I'll put like, I know I'm using this kettlebell. I know I'm using the bar. I'll lay it in there so it just kind of heats up. You get something better. But just get gloves. They make like old gym gloves. I know it's not the most popular thing. Um, but I think my clients, uh, I'm just gonna start buying those for them for the time being until I get a, a heated space. All right, so tune in. Uh, I'm probably making another episode on lighting. Lighting was the other problem that I had when uh, the doors start to close in the cold weather. Um, I'm lucky I have a lot of natural light, as you can tell, but still it gets dark at five o'clock. So I will talk about my lighting options and how I made it not so depressing in here uh, come winter time. Tune in next time.